we will pick up today where where the slides for some reason turned invisible last class period and that is well we're going to ask just a couple questions about magnifiers and then go to microscopes and telescopes things that are a little more complicated optical instruments so first a clicker question as disc uh come on actually that's there we go as discussed the object is placed at <laughs> if the object is placed the focal point the simple magnifier where is the image produced by the simple magnifier well the the verbiage here is not quite grammatically correct but if the object is at the focal point of simple magnifier, where's the image is the question. Can you re-enter? Hmm? Can you re-enter? Because mine just says my answer is C. I just lost it. Um, but I can't re-enter. You certainly should be able to. It is open and most people have. Are you sure you're not in a different session, like from a different class? Oh, no, it was in class. 33. <laughs> okay. Waiting three people, two people, two people. Now just waiting on Alex. Um, you might need to come forward as you see James do a lot. Seeing the channel now. <laughs> Still like anything. Okay, well, yeah, we'll go on here. We have zero one sixteen zero. So all but one person said infinitely far away on the same side as the object. One person said at the focal point of the magnifier on the opposite side. This is the correct answer. There's many ways of pointing it out. One way is the definition of the focal point is if I have an object at the focal point, the light comes out of the lens with parallel rays. Where do parallel rays meet? Okay, they don't is a correct answer, but a mathematician can say they meet as you approach infinitely far on either side because they're asymptotically getting closer in, well, the angle is asymptotically approaching zero from one place to, you know, different rays. And so we could say that they meet at infinity in either direction. So why did this say on the same size the object if it meets at infinity in either direction. The reason is simple. Our eye can only see what's on that side of us, not what's on that side of us. And so we're going to see only the, the image at, at infinity on the side that we can see. So that's why it was that answer. Another way of doing this would have just said 1 over f equals 1 over distance object plus 1 over distance image. This is what we did in class. And so if distance object is F, mathematically you have distance image approaches plus or minus infinity. So that's the mathematical derivation for the same thing one was very much a conceptual understanding of what a lens is doing 
The other one was the mathematics that comes from the geometry from that concept. So just a review of the simple magnifier. In general, the simple magnifier will have a magnification equal to the near point divided by the object distance. Which for unaccommodated vision, what did it mean to have unaccommodated vision? No, no distance between each other. Now, we made that just as an assumption for how we're using the simple magnifier. So we said, I'm putting this baby right next to my eye. <laughs> Which works great for seeing this. Doesn't work well at all for seeing you guys. The, I forgot my question now. What was my question? What was the difference between? Uh, oh, unaccommodated. Yes. What does it mean, unaccommodated? Anyone else? We got a brave soul. Any other brave souls? Okay. Going for somebody that's not so brave, I'll, I'll draw a card randomly. <laughs> Alex, what does unaccommodated viewing mean? Without a magnifier? Um, not without a magnifier. We're going to use a magnifier and have unaccommodated viewing. That would be accommodated. Accommodated is when your eye is focusing on something closer than your far point. So then unaccommodated would be where the object is at your far point? Well, where the image is at your far point. Where the image is at your far point, which means the object is going to be at the focal point of the lens if your far point is the ideal infinitely far away. So unaccommodated means your eyeball is relaxed. You're not doing any extra work to focus. You're just letting the cornea do its thing. And so the image is at your far point, which we will say is infinitely far away. Although in reality, we know that for many of us, the far point might be a meter or so away. So unaccommodated viewing is relaxed eyeball. And for the relaxed eyeball, the magnification you can get is your near point divided by the focal length of the lens. Of course, my near point is closer than the, quote, ideal near point. Why is it closer? Well, my eye's just a little misshapen. I'm nearsighted. So I can, you know, I can focus up to about here, and that's smaller than 25 centimeters from my eye. What does that tell you about the magnification I'm going to get by using this? If my near point's smaller, what's that going to do to the magnification? It's actually going to be smaller because it's in the numerator position. So I'm going to get slightly smaller amounts of magnification because I can already see it when it was closer than somebody with normal vision. And if we use full accommodation, if we strain with our eyes so that after an hour our eyes are going to be really tired, you increase the magnification by one. And everyone considers that not a worthwhile trade-off. There's no point in having eye strain to increase the magnification by one. You can get an eyepiece with magnification of 10 or one with magnification of 15, just spend a little money and get the 15, and you'll have more magnification and less eye strain. So for our work, we will focus on this. So when we talk about telescopes and microscopes, we will use a magnification of the unaccommodated viewing when the eyeball is relaxed. Now, another, another problem, I'm not going to have you work out the problem today like I did last class period, but another problem to work through. A converging lens with a focal length of four centimeters is used as a simple magnifier. So how would I find the, the focal length of this lens? If I want to find the focal length, what would you do? There, there are a lot of ways you can do it. One way, of course, is to put it on a light bench, put an object here, 
find where the images, measure the object distance and image distance, and then use what I think you said. Another way that's easier, although not quite as precise, is to take an object very far away and find where it's in focus. So Alex, you're close to the window. Go ahead and open up that window. That is open the blind, obviously you can't open the window. And yeah, when he opens it, I'm just gonna hold this away from the paper and see where I see a clear image coming from outside. And it's really hard to see on this paper. I, let me turn off the class lights just to make it easier to see. Now with the lights off, you can actually see where do I get a clear image right there. So what's the focal length of this lens? About six inches. Right, that's an easy way to determine the focal length, where something that's far, that window and the stuff outside the window might as well be infinitely far away as far as I'm concerned. And I can get this focal length. So this one here is about six inches focal length, not the four centimeters of that, but it can still work as a magnifier. What's the best magnification? Well, what's the magnification for unaccommodated viewing? If I have a normal eye and this has a yeah, 6.00 inches. Yeah, I'm that accurate. Um, six inches, you convert that to centimeters, it's times 2.54 centimeters per inch. Well, that's six times 2.54. I know I should do this in my head. It's going to be somewhere around, well, let's just do it. So I actually have 15 point, point 0.2 centimeters is my focal length for this very actual thing. So I'm going to do it for this. So a converging lens with a focal length of 15.2 centimeters is used as a simple magnifier. The lens forms a virtual image at your near point. It's going to form a virtual image at my near point. Is that accommodated or unaccommodated viewing? It's at the near point. Is my eye working or not working? Where, where is my eye focused if it is relaxed? At my far point. So to, to view something at my near point, the eye is working, that means it's accommodated viewing. So this is gonna be accommodated viewing and ask where should the object be placed and what is the angular magnification? Assume the magnifier is held close to the eye. So that means I don't have any offset between the eyeball and the magnifier like when we did the eyeglasses. So I have the lens. Here's the focal length, 15.2 centimeters. And then I'm going to have my image. Out here, notice the distance image is negative. Why is the distance image negative? Okay, because of where it's at, because it's on the same side as the object. Here's my distance object there. And so the question here, here is, where should the object be placed first? And second, what's the angular magnification? So how do I find that distance object? So I solve for one over distance object. That is perfect, by the way. Put in my numbers. One over the focal length was 15.2 centimeters minus one over my distance image, which was minus 25 centimeters. Notice it's minus a minus, so it's an end of plus. And I have to do that with the calculator. 
And I don't know this calculator. I'm sure it has a button for one over, but I can't find it. There it is. One over that plus one. So it's 0 0.1056 centimeters to the minus one is what I get for one over distance objects. The distance object is 9.47 centimeters. So there's my or my object distance, the place where I can place it to get maximum magnification. And then my magnification is going to be pretty lame, right? Pretty lame because this is a pretty long focal length. Okay, tell me what's wrong about what I just wrote. That doesn't have a negative sign, but there's something wrong here. Here's our magnification equations. Change the zoom so you can see them both. Okay, plus one. So that would be. 25 centimeters over 9.47 centimeters plus one. So that'd be 3.64. No units here for the magnification. It'd be 3.64 times magnification. Another way of doing this should have been, well, um, I, nope, that's wrong. It's wrong because it's not 9.47. My focal length was 15.2. What I calculate was the second way, my mistake. 25 divided by 15.2 plus one, 2.64 times. Another way of calculating that would be to just use this general form, 25 over the 9.47, which gives me the same number. Yes. Why did you subtract the one? Subtract? Um, that was an erasure and erase one. I didn't see that erase that stroke. Oh, okay. Remember I erased the bottom here where I had the wrong number. <laughs> didn't realize it was erased. So there is a simple magnifier problem, a very simple case. I use this, bring this up here and I can get a maximum of 2.6 times magnification using it. Not a very good magnifier, but still that would make it much more readable if I'm just using it for trying to read. Hence reading glasses. Reading glasses are just simple magnifiers. You're holding it about two centimeters away from your eye, just like you would eyeglasses, and then it allows you to magnify things with that simple magnifier. Now another clicker question. What is the point of a compound microscope? We asked this question last class period as well. <clears throat> Still no luck, Alex? Alrighty. We have unanimous agreement 
to magnify small objects that are nearby. That's correct. Thank you for being right. So here's a picture of a compound microscope. Why is it compound? Because it has two lenses. It's not something really sophisticated. What are you doing with those two lenses? The first lens is the way I talk about going to make an image that the second lens focuses on. The second lens, the first one is closest to the object, so we call it the objective. The second lens is closest to the eye, we call it an eyepiece. The objective is going to make an intermediary image that will be magnified, and then the eyepiece will further magnify it. So our magnification for the microscope, I'll just use a mu for micro. Magnification for a microscope is equal to the magnification of the eyepiece multiplied by the magnification for the objective. We've already studied the eyepiece, the simple magnifier. Magnification for the eyepiece is the near point divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. That is the unaccommodated magnification. Remember I said we don't want eye strain, so we're simply going to go with the unaccommodated result. I know you could raise it a little bit with the accommodated result, but at the expense of eye strain. So then we just need to find the magnification of the objective. This here, by the way, was an angular magnification. The magnification for the objective will be what we call a transverse magnification. And it's the one that we saw first. Magnification of the objective is equal to height of the image over height of the object, which is equal to minus distance image over distance object. So what we're going to do to find the magnification of the microscope is calculate these two magnifications separately and then combine them. The second one we've already studied. We already know it's based on the near point of the eyeball and the lens we use for the eyepiece. So that calculation is already done. But we need to look at this calculation to figure out what it's going to be. So if I look at my picture here, notice I have the focal length of the objective and then I have the focal length of the eyepiece. Which one is shorter and which one's longer? Okay, so which one, which one is the longer of those two, the eyepiece or the objective? The eyepiece. That's actually an important thing that we're going to talk about at the end of this. Because at the end of this, it will look like it doesn't matter, but it does. I want to calculate this magnification distance image over distance object. Well, I know that 1 over distance object for the objective, so I'm going to use the subscript O when I'm doing the objective here just so we don't get it confused with the eyepiece, is equal to 1 over the focal length of the objective minus 1 over distance image for the objective. Right, that's just a definition. It's using, well, not definition. It's using the thin lens equation solving for one over distance object. And so that means the magnification of the objective is distance image object over distance object objective. So all I did was I multiplied one over distance object for the objective by distance image over the objective. And I forgot the minus sign here, so that's going to put minus this whole thing. So there's the magnification of the objective in terms of the distance image object. it doesn't seem like I've gotten myself any closer to reality to something useful. What kinds of things do you measure with a microscope? To you, you simply don't measure the image distance for the intermediate image. 
It's not one of the measurable things. But what we do measure is the length, the distance between the lenses. So if I call this the length, you note that the length is equal to the distance image for the objective plus distance object for the eyepiece. That's just this piece plus this piece. But unlike what is shown in this picture, I said we're going to use unaccommodated viewing. If it's unaccommodated viewing, where do you place the object? Unaccommodated viewing, the image is at infinity and the object is at the focal point. And so for unaccommodated viewing, distance object of the eyepiece is equal to the focal length of the eyepiece. It doesn't show that in this picture, but that's actually where you want it to be. And so our equation becomes a little simpler. Now I can solve for distance image of the objective and put that here. So I have magnification of the objective is equal to minus parenthesis. I'm going to zoom out. I did need to specify that's focal length of the objective because I was working purely with the objective in this. I just dropped it off. And giving it a common denominator, I multiply by the one by focal length of the objective over focal length of the objective. So, The magnification of the objective is this equation. So what's the total magnification? It's the product of these two. So magnification total I brought the minus sign outside. There's the equation for the magnification of my compound microscope. It's minus, what's the minus sign meaning out front? The magnification is minus, what does that mean? It's inverted. So the microscope is inverting because of that minus sign. Why did I bring the minus sign out? Because the length of the microscope is always larger than some of the two focal lengths. Hence, the term parentheses is positive. The near point times the length minus the two focal point lengths divided by the two focal lengths. What is going to make your magnification larger? What things can you do to make the magnification larger? Well, put the magnification first. You mean put the object part? Um, well, I guess the lens itself. Well, it, so it would be like the light would end up being bigger. Okay, if the length of the microscope is longer, then that's in the numerator, and that would make it larger, right? Or what about the focal lengths? What's going to make it have a bigger magnification based on the focal lengths? Smaller focal lengths will be bigger magnification. 
Now there's one more thing we have to think about, and that is we do need to have this thing in focus. It's not like the length is an independent parameter. You can use any length you want. You have to have the length adjusted for the focus because you have to have the object makes an image at the focal point of the eyepiece. And so adjusting the focus with the microscope is done by adjusting the length, the separation between the lenses. And in order to get maximum magnification, you want to have the object as close as possible to the objective, which makes it farther away, the image farther away and lengthens the length. But it is because of the relationship between length and the focal lengths, you always have the eyepiece is the really short focal length lens so that you can have a big magnification from that and keep the length within reason. So if you tear, turn a microscope around, you have to change the length to get it in focus again. And if you turn around, it's going to be a much poorer or lower magnification. But that's how a microscope works. You work by having the first lens make an intermediate image that the eyepiece looks at. The first lens is called the objective because it's the lens that faces the object. In a normal microscope, like you guys use microscope in biology lab, right? How do you change the magnification on that baby? You change it from one eyepiece to another eyepiece. And those eyepieces are actually different lengths that are sticking out. Have you ever noticed that? And that's because the length between the objective and the eyepiece lens has to change if you change the focal length of the eyepiece. Because the image that's, per, that's created by the objective is going to be the same place. But if you use a shorter focal length eyepiece, you're going to get a higher magnification. But that lens is also going to have to be closer to my objective so that the intermediate image is at its focal length. So the highest magnification, even if nothing's marked, the one that sticks up the least is going to be the highest magnification. The one that sticks up the most for the eyepiece is going to be the lowest magnification because of the relationship between the length and the focal length of the eyepiece. Now this next thing is an important aspect. There's a couple important aspects that we don't talk about that much with microscopes. And so one of them is the numerical aperture. The numerical aperture is a number that tells you about how much light you are collecting. The more light you can get from your object, the better you should be able to see it. But simply because of geometry, you're only going to get a fraction of the light that's coming off of that object. Right? If I have a little bug here, that little bug sending out light in all directions, if I have my objective above it, only the light that hits my objective can be collected. And so it's simply a geometry problem. What fraction of the total light can I collect? That's what the numer numerical aperture is dealing with. What fraction of the light can you collect? So it starts with that half angle alpha. You notice the picture on your left shows the angle theta. Theta. Theta is the collection angle. We take half of that collection angle, and that's alpha. So we show the full collection angle just so you can use that for, yeah, half of that is alpha. And then the numerical aperture is simply sine of that half angle, and then it's times n. The times n seems to be the funny part. What is n right now? It's the index of refraction. It's telling you about how fast light travels in the medium. And you logically should be saying, what difference does that make to how much light I collect? Right, the index of refraction is so named because it tells us about how much the light will bend. Yes, you have... You have some microscopes are liquid 
um, they have a liquid between the object and the objective lens. Why do they do that? Because, whoops, I only had one hand. I should have never done that. Because having a liquid in there, so it's called an immersion microscope. You have your sample under a piece of glass, right? You have a little cover slip over your um, sample. And then there's a liquid on top. And the liquid here, it shows lines for three different possible liquids. Line A is for that liquid. Okay, I said liquid. I should probably call it a fluid because A is for air. If you have air above the glass, when light goes from glass to air, it's definitely speeding up. So it bends away from normal, which means that you're going to collect less light. Light that came at an angle like this is out here, and it doesn't go through that objective lens. B is showing if it's in water. Water has an index refraction that is between that of air and glass. And so it's still going to be going a little faster in the water, so it's still going to bend a little bit away, but not nearly as much, which means that light coming out at bigger angles can still be collected because it didn't get bent further away. And then the last one is showing an oil. An oil immersion microscope, the light travels much more slowly in the oil, and it actually bends toward the normal, and so you can collect an even larger range of angles will go into that objective. So you're able to collect more light by having the light go from your sample into oil and then into the lens, then if you went from your sample to air to lens. And so that's why the index refraction was there in the numerical aperture equation. So the numerical aperture, index refraction times sine of that half angle. The bigger the numerical aperture, the more light it will collect. Now there's some other things that I don't even have slides to go into with the microscope. One of those is the resolution. Resolution is the term for what's the smallest detail that can be seen. If you're trying to look at, you know, the, the little membranes on a tiny insect, you want to see tiny details, so you want to have a high resolution, which means a really small number for the resolution. How's that work for you? High means a small number because the resolution is measuring how small you can see. Well, something that we will learn coming up, not today's lecture, which is why I skipped over usually here, is that the bigger the aperture, the smaller the details that can be seen. So with a microscope, the bigger your objective diameter is, both the bigger the numerical aperture, the more light you're going to collect, and the better the resolution you're going to get. So bigger aperture is really beneficial, bigger opening. But we also need a really small focal length. Bigger aperture, to get a small focal length, you have to have a lot of curvature, and you have severe limits on what you can do there. So there are, you know, making a spherical, remember I talked about the spherical uh, lens we have? That's your limit for the shortest focal length you can get for a given diameter. And so when they make these lenses, you know, they, they've got competing things to try to get the best magnification and the best resolution. If you have resolution that is beyond, um, beyond your magnification limit, you're, you can't magnify to see all of the resolution available. The other way around, if your resolution is too poor, you can magnify a bunch of fuzz that's out of focus. So designing these takes a lot of optimization. And let's move to telescopes. Telescopes are just the opposite of microscopes. A telescope, well, I say just the opposite. A telescope is looking at a large thing, but it's looking at a large thing that's far away. Opposite really doesn't count for far versus tiny, right? So saying opposite really isn't right, but we think of it. You still have the same functions 
you have an objective lens that is the lens closer to the object. And that objective lens is going to create an intermediate image. And then your eyepiece is going to take that intermediate image and magnify it. So let's look at how a telescope works. And we're going to start with this lower telescope. This lower telescope is your traditional Galilean telescope. We have two converging lenses. And so I have a better picture of it, right? Nope, I don't. That's a third style. So I have an object that's very, very far away. If I have an object that's very, very far away, where is the image going to be formed? Remember when I used this and I said I wanted to find its focal length? If the object is really far away, like infinitely far away, where should the image be? It's going to be at the focal point. So the objective in a telescope is just going to have its image formed at the focal point. And the angular magnification is just going to be 1. Right, the angle that it makes is going to be the same. But now we've made an image that is at the focal point of the objective. So I have distance object for the objective is equal to the focal length of the objective. And then we're going to put the eyepiece. And once again, we're going to use unaccommodated viewing. So for unaccommodated viewing, where is the object going to be for the eyepiece? Is it the what? The image is infinitely far away, so the object is at the focal point. So that means we're going to have these two on top of each other. The picture shows them at separate locations, but for unaccommodated viewing, so I'll put this here. This is distance image objective. I made a mistake in my nomenclature. Distance object eyepiece is equal to focal length of the eyepiece. Now, how do we calculate the magnification of this? Well, the magnification is once again going to be magnification of the eyepiece times magnification of the objective. And the magnification of the objective is going to be the angle that, um, for the reason my brain has gone dead on me. My brain really has gone dead. This is one of the easiest calculations, so I didn't look at it before class. And suddenly I can't remember what the magnification of the objective is. Da -da -da. I can't remember. I, I mean, a smart person would remember this. I, I could make something up, but that doesn't help us. The magnification total, it turns out, is minus, I'm going right to the answer, minus focal length of the objective over focal length of the eyepiece. I'm trying to remember how we get to that but I can't for the life of me. I'll look it up. I'll say it in the first two minutes of class, next class period, because it is that very simple. The total magnification is minus because it's inverted. Focal length of the objective lens divided by focal length of the eyepiece. What's the length of the telescope? Well, looking at my picture, the length is equal to the sum of the focal lengths, focal length of the objective plus focal length of the eyepiece. So those are the two equations that govern the magnification of my telescope. 
The minus sign means it's inverted. If I want a large magnification, I want to have a long focal length objective and a short focal length eyepiece. Telescopes tend to be long. Looking at this equation, why would a telescope tend to be long? Well, to get large magnification, we need a large focal length objective. And since the length is the sum of the focal lengths, if you have a long focal length objective, you have to have a long telescope. So that's why telescopes tend to be long, because you have to accommodate that focal length of the objective. Eyepiece focal lengths are pretty short, because a small focal length eyepiece is going to make a larger magnification. So this here is your standard type of telescope. It's inverting because that minus sign. That means if I were to use binoculars and they were made like this, I'm looking at a binocular and I see, you know, let's say Jamal Charles, just to use a player that's played on two of the teams I don't like. <laughs> I see Jamal Charles running down the field and in my, in my binoculars, if they were made like this, where would his feet be? His feet would be up because it's inverted with that minus sign. And if I see him going like this in my binoculars, what direction am I going to have to move by binoculars to keep track of him? If I see him going to the right and things are inverted, I've got to track the opposite direction to keep him in my binoculars. That wouldn't work, would it? So that's not what we use in binoculars. In binoculars, we actually use prisms. Remember we talked about prisms used to be all used everywhere? We use prisms to re-invert the image. So the prisms are used to re-invert it. They also allow you to have a longer light path because they fold the light back so that you have an effectively much longer telescope than what you see. That's why the binoculars have the funny shape to them. Your binoculars, if you just look at one piece of the binoculars, here's the eyepiece, there's where your eyeball goes, and here's the objective. The actual light path is going Okay, I better do it with just one line or I'll get it confused. It comes in like this, goes over here, goes down, goes over, goes up. So the actual light path is covering this range here three times. So that it's a longer light path than the length you have in your binoculars. And then you have those prisms inverting the image. But there are other ways to get around that. This top one is another way of getting around the inverted image. What's different about the top telescope here? Should be able to see a very clear difference between the two telescopes. The type of lens used for the eyepiece. This is using, instead of a converging type lens for the eyepiece, it's using a diverging type. What difference does that make? Well, your magnification equation and length equations are still going to be the same, but with the negative focal length for the eyepiece, it's going to make it marginally shorter, but more importantly, a negative focal length for the eyepiece is going to invert the image, making it so it's not inverted. So this design for telescope gives you a non-inverted um, image. And notice for this one, you have the intermediate images up here, and that's the object for this that makes an image that's the secondary image infinitely far away. So it's the same set of equations for both telescopes, 
And here's the final telescope we'll look at, one that has a field lens, a different way of reinverting. This field lens is actually really useful. If you have a scope for something like, you know, hunting, that scope probably has a little crosshair thing in it or, you know, a reticule or something like that. How do they put that in there? Anybody seen one that has that? Okay, one person. What they have done is they have a screen in here at the place where you're going to form your image. And then you're re-imaging that screen. And so you have the image that's formed from your object and the screen at the same location, and then you're focusing on that. Now that field lens, it's called the field lens here, it's called the erecting lens, is simply going to make a second intermediate image that's inverted. So it's re-inverting. But what's that doing to the length of your telescope? It's making it even longer. It can also increase the magnification. In the situation that's shown here, you notice the first image is smaller than the second image. So that field lens is also used to increase the magnification a little, but it makes it a much longer telescope. So for your magnification, you have to have a longer telescope when you have that field lens. Okay, have a happy Sabbath. I'll see you again on Monday.